Produced by Malik. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. Today is going to be a really fun video. You guys all have been waiting for this video. This video is about the breeding triggers for your high pants aster zebra. So before I start, I'm going to say if you haven't watched the last two videos with Dr. Thomas, I'll put links to it up here. So you should go watch that video first before you watch this so you understand why we're doing this and how we get to this point and some of the things that you might need to get to this point. So uh, granted that you have watched the last few videos, it is October. This is in North America as well as in Europe, this is the height of the zebra playco breeding season as far as I understand. A lot of zebra playco keepers and breeders have already sent me pictures of fry and eggs that they've gotten this month. And mine are just getting ready to start, start spawning. There's some trappings and stuff. So I'm excited. I'm hoping some fry by the end of the month or before that. As well, a lot of my other pe friends that uh, are breeding high ancestors in general as well as all my high ancestors are all spawning right now. So this is like that moment, you know, that's the moment that we've all been waiting for to get our fish to spawn. Now granted that your fish are old enough to spawn and you do have males and females and they are of sexual maturity and uh, that they are ready to spawn, this is the time that you can get them to spawn. But there are things that they might require to to start spawning and we're going to be looking at those as well as triggers and how to achieve those throughout this video. So the first thing I'm going to say is I want to give shout outs to some people. The first person I want to give a shout out to is Professor Leandro Sosa. Uh, he's a professor out in Brazil, researching and studying zebra plecos on Rio, Rio Zingu and Volto de Grande. And uh, so basically they are trying to protect this environment where these animals come from. So highly recommend checking out his channel, I'll put a link to it up here. He has a wealth of knowledge about these animals as well as their natural environment. So I highly recommend checking his channel out. The second person I want to give a shout out to is Dr. Thomas who has helped me quite a bit. And this video is basically, uh, this video series is uh, prompted by some of the things that he has taught me over the last little bit and I want to give you guys the knowledge that he has passed on to me in how to get these animals to spawn. So we're going to be looking at that as well. And the third person I want to give a shout out to is uh, Dave Yarman. I believe Dave is the, the star of this video today because Dave has achieved what we all want to achieve which is the natural water parameters of Rio Zingu for these animals without sacrificing his pH. So he has a complete method on how to achieve this. So I'll also highlight that at the end of this video throughout the video. So watch till the end. You don't want to miss out. Thank you so much. And if I've forgotten to mention your names, you guys have helped me. Uh, I'm really sorry because this video has uh, a lot of information that I've accumulated over the years from many of you guys, uh, many different sources, many different breeders. So I'm going to be giving you all that information. So I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. It might be a little longer than 10 minutes, but I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes. Let's get into today's video. Produced by Mali. So the first thing I'm going to say is that uh, Professor Leander Sosa sent me some of the water parameters of the Rio Sengu and uh, the pH in the Rio Zingu all year round is 6.8 to 7, so it's quite stable. Uh, the temperature is 28 to 32 degrees Celsius. So 28 degrees to 32 degrees Celsius all year round. So this is a very small stretch of the river that is not as uh, cold as some of the other parts of the Amazon. It's quite warm, it's quite fast, it's rapid white water currents and that's where zebra plecos live. The next thing is the dissolved, total dissolved solids. So he sent me a measurement of uh, 30 micro siemens and uh, so that translates to about 20 parts per million or a little bit more of total dissolved solids. So it's very soft water. Dimitris, uh, that, was, uh, that also sent me some measurements from last year that he got from last year, he said that when he measured the micro siemens was 21 micro siemens, which means the TDS was like about 12 to 15 parts per million. So uh, basically it's very, very, very soft water, but the pH is about 6.8 to 7. So what you want to do is try to get your water, you, in an aquarium it's quite difficult to achieve these levels of softness without sacrificing your pH. So there's uh, things you can do to, to kind of combat that and uh, Dave has actually figured out a really amazing method, so we'll be looking at that in a bit. But basically what you want to do is to, to reduce your total dissolved solids and your carbonate hardness in your water gradually over a period of let's say one week to two weeks. So based on what Dr. Thomas has taught me as well as what I do personally, what Dr. Thomas said was you have to get rainwater or RO and uh, do small water changes every single day with pure RO or pure rainwater. So essentially what you're doing is you're, you're recreating a rain event. 
So basically, uh, what we're trying to do is simulate the rain season in the Amazon. So what happens is rainwater is very soft and it has like very low total dissolved solids. Usually between zero and five to ten parts per million of total dissolved solids. Technically, it should be zero, but because there's atmospheric uh, de debris and uh, pollutants, the there some of it does get dissolved. So you will get between five and ten parts per million of hardness. Uh, but it's very soft aside from that. And uh, if you are living in a normal environment, uh, normal area where there's not a lot of environmental pollutants, then your rainwater is quite safe to be used in your aquarium. So I highly recommend testing it with a pH pen. Also test it with some of your other fish before you dump some water from you know your rooftop onto your zebra pleco tank. But if you can collect collect same, safe rainwater, this is one of the options. The second option is RO. So RO is quite safe. It's a little expensive, but um, in terms of like what the amount of water you would require for this particular purpose, it's not a lot. You can even go and buy a couple of gallons of RO water and then you can do that as well if uh, having an RO system is not an option. So what you would want to do is you want to do like a 5 to 10 percent water change. A 5 percent would be more ideal just every single day for about a week. And while you're doing this, measure your TDS, measure your pH, and always keep a track of where your parameters are so that you do not have a pH crash, which is where you can potentially kill your fish. Now, Dr. Thomas has told me that he has measured really low pHs, uh, I think 5.5 or below sometimes in some of his zebra pleco tanks. And uh, the, 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 the general hardness and the carbonate hardness was basically zero on his measurements. So this is where most of these fish spawn, and that makes sense where uh, when it comes down to it because the natural environment where they come from is also very soft and uh, very low in total dissolved solid content. So basically I don't believe that we need to get to close to 30, 20, 30 parts per million of total dissolved solids or 30, 30 uh, micro siemens of conductivity. You just need to start bringing it down where, for example, my TDS is about 160 so if I can even simulate a small amount of reduction that is enough for my fish to start spawning. So a, a, a water change with cool water, in my case, with a lot of my fish, triggers them to spawn. And uh, that has worked for me, but that also means my, my water is quite soft. So another thing I personally like doing is using things like oak leaves and uh, catapa leaves. I don't use catapa leaves myself because it crashes my pH a little too far. But oak leaves work really well for me. But depending on where you are, if you have hard water, then you can use catapa leaves instead of oak. And essentially they do the same thing, they soften your water a little bit and you, they drop your pH. Another thing I, I am planning on doing is getting safety sorbs, so I'll be doing experiments with this. So subscribe and stay tuned for that because I haven't been able to purchase some safety sorb yet. And uh, I have ordered some but it hasn't gotten here. So I will be, as soon as it gets here, we will be doing a lot of experiments with safety sorb to see how it affects the total dissolved solid content as well as the calcium or the carbonate hardness of my particular water and how I can translate that into getting more success with my spawns. Now having said that, the highlight of the show I was saying earlier was Dave Yarman and the reason I said that is because Dave has been amazing with finding out how we can achieve this and I believe out of everybody I speak to every single day about this particular topic and I talk to a lot of you guys about fish, essentially zebra placos and, and placos in general, as well as many of the other types of fish that I keep, people always message me and me and Dave have been talking about this for quite a while now and I, I love talking to him because he figures this stuff out, he's quite intelligent and uh, I'm going to give you the formula basically, he found out a way to achieve really low general hardness or zero general hardness, 0.5 carbonate hardness and uh, stable pH by using two products. So this is not a paid advertisement. Uh, if you are in the UK, you can get this product in the UK. It's called uh, the company is called Countryside Aquatics, and they have two separate products: their breeder resin and their uh, nitri nitrate removing resin. So what Dave has been doing is he's been using two kilograms of nitrate removing resin and one kilogram of breeder resin in an external filter, so like a canister, and he's crushing his water, he's pumping his water through that nitrate resin and uh, breeder resin, which I essentially removes all the nitrates and most of the hardness out of that water. So the result he has gotten out of this experiment or his setup is that his pH is between 6.8 and 7 and his GH is 0 and his KH is 0 0.5. Now this is the holy grail of water for zebra placos. I am not expecting all of you guys to achieve this. I am not achieving this myself. This is very advanced stuff and thank you so much Dave Jarman for 
messaging me with this information and all that you do for this hobby and 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 your fish are gonna spawn any day now as far as I understand this is essentially what the water is in the Rio Zingu I mean you might be missing some current because you're not your aquarium is not a white water rapid but I, aside from that you have the Rio Zingu in your living room you know the exact water so I'm very proud of you I'm very happy that you have achieved this and I'm thankful that you have uh, taking the time to also share this with me as well as everybody else so everybody comment below and say thank you Dave and also comment and say thank you Dr. Thomas and thank you uh, Dr. Leandro Sosa and uh, Dimitri for everything that they have contributed to this video and uh, as always I just want to say I really want you, you guys to get your zebra playcos to spawn so this is what many of the different people have done to get their fish to spawn and these are different techniques that can be used we will be looking at this in more detail in upcoming videos but I really want to add one little bit so that you can sum this video up uh, in a more precise manner now zebra playcos are not supposed to be hard to spawn because I have a friend who is uh, in southern Ontario a little bit south of where I live and they have two of my friends actually they just opened a new pet store called uh, Bobby G's Pro Aquatics so if you guys are in Niagara or London go check out Bobby G's Pro Aquatics not a paid advertisement Bobby and William both have zebra playcos in their tanks that are spawning now with William I do know that he did do certain things but before his zebra playcos were spawning naturally a few months ago when he first got spawns he sent me pictures and he was like I don't understand how they're spawning but they're spawning in my tank 400 parts per million in general hardness and uh, pH of 8 so what he did since we had that conversation I told him what he can do to increase the spawns and also help them out a little bit is to put some catapa leaves and he has been doing that and he has brought his pH down to about 6 now by doing that he has also gotten more spawns and he actually was talking to me I think yesterday or the day before yesterday and informed to me that he got several new spawns and new fry are awaiting to be sold in a few months or whenever they are ready so really happy for you uh, William and uh, also Bobby G congratulations on your new pet store really happy you guys are getting your zebra plecos to spawn in such hard water so I just want to add that to this video to show you guys that these animals can spawn in a various range of water so essentially what I think the actual trigger is is simulating a rain event so you can either do that by using rainwater RO water or just plain tap water like I do and uh, just age it for a few days and make sure there's no chlorine or chloramine in it and uh, do a small water change every day and, and, and make sure that the fish feel like they're getting a, a new like a, a rain event basically in nature what happens is it starts raining the they start getting fresh water so the same thing applies here this is the basic bottom line for breeding all types of catfish I have so many different types of playcos corridors and all types of different other fish they all spawn in my tanks all the time and this is how I get them to spawn I water change religiously I constantly change water I love changing water because as soon as I change water my fish spawn so that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with make it rain zebra playcos everyone wish you guys the best of success see you in the next video I love you all God bless you